passenger at the back. I'll show you in a sec. Here it is, my special passenger. Big, big 200 liter fuel tank passenger. So we actually had this fuel tank for months now. It's been like just stored. We saw it on Gumtree and it was like a brand new Hino 200 liter fuel tank. And it was like, we can't like pass this opportunity. It's, it's so affordable compared to many other things that we saw and everything is out of stock at the moment. So yeah, we've been kind of like waiting to have all the plumbing finished and like the wiring so that we had that empty spot on the side of the mug uh, free. And now kind of like we are finishing, we want to get some fuel tanks bracket made because this one, the, the one that came with it wouldn't be quite suitable for the mugs. So we want some custom one made. Yeah, like that's pretty good. All right, first breakfast in the camper. We're gonna test the induction. All right. Fry, we don't need that high. Well, that is exciting. I love it. Got a good view. You can imagine me looking at the beach in the forest. Even at the lowest mode, it cooks very well. So, saying we're still at 99% battery, so we've almost cooked breakfast. Or is this just my breakfast? Just mine. Okay, we've almost cooked Angie's breakfast. <laughs> it's using 32 amps. Oh, stop doing it. Stop kicking me. Well, breakfast is almost cooked. Yeah, the fan on the inverter is switched off, which is cool. Yeah. So it says status charging. Is that still on? So that's still on cooking. Yeah. You sure that's cooking still? Yeah. Yeah. Consider heat. Okay. So it says it's not discharging anymore. Because you must have reached maybe temperature and not using as much. It's definitely cooking. Okay, I'll put the higher temperature. Okay, and keep back. Temperature. Must have switched off. Mm. So yeah, that had switched off. It must have reached temperature maybe. Alright, I finished the cook breakfast and let Chris report from our experience. So we just had our first breakfast successful in the mug. So stoked. That was about five minutes ago. We're back at 99%. So we used one percent <laughs> of our battery capacity so yeah we're absolutely pumped for that that was both our breakfasts so induction is very much looking like a thing for us which yeah, is awesome it's amazing it was so stressful we kind of like started to think oh like we're never gonna be able to cook and like maybe we'll have to uh, definitely have a backup of gas but now like it's really making us feel confident about our choice which yeah. is great especially for like such a cheap unit so really pleased more tests to do for sure to know, but um, yeah, first preliminary test went really well. Okay, the little 10 litre tank is mounted for the diesel heater. Ended up putting it on this rear mud flat. Seems to be a pretty good place for it. It fit really well, it was easy to modify. It didn't fit so well on the toolbox. So um, got it there, it's nice and protected by the wheel. Uh, this doesn't stick out proud from the truck much so um, and it's on the same side as our 160 litre tank so we just filled that up so that was good uh, I've got it all plumbed in and 
made some adjustments. Now the fuel pump is under here on an angle, so it pushes the fuel up, turns the filter around, and um, yeah, time to give it a test. We've also put this Car Builders exhaust wrap on it, which has brilliant reviews. So hoping that'll keep the temperatures down from the exhaust, especially inside. And I just need to get another cable clamp to add that there, making sure that weep hole's at the bottom and um, we're good to go. So I'm gonna test it now for the first time. <laughs> this will be interesting, yeah. Good therefore it's 33 degrees. Yeah. <laughs> So the diesel heater itself came with its own little 15 amp MIDI fuse but we've added another MIDI blade fuse as well on our inner drive side of things. So we've got two fuses kind of as backup. Diesel heater screen is going to be down here. That'll be mounted on this wall and um, that should be nice and easy to get to. This is what the heater is looking like now. So we've got that wrap going all the way down. I'm going to probably fill that gap with filling foam. I think that'll be the best idea and then the actual diesel line goes straight through the floor along with the cable that plugs into the pump. This will be attached on there with some clamps and probably come out about here in the center. I think that'll be a good place for it. And I can access the diesel heater easy from up top. And the flies. All right, so um, I'm gonna switch it on. And can you be in here? I'll run outside and check that there's diesel flowing and give you a yell. Um, other than that, yeah, it should be fine. Okay. I'm ready for the test. So click on power. Okay. Right. So you saw it fill up, it went bop, 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 and now it's filling the filter. It's a slow process. No, it's because of the first time. Here we go. So watch this. Oh, it's going up. Feel the bubbles. Five watts. Diesel heater is cranking. <laughs> Ooh, that does get hot. Can't hold that. All right, so that was a successful diesel heater test. We found a very useful video on YouTube, luckily to follow step by step because the manual is really Garbage. useless. <laughs> and we cranked it all the way to the maximum temperature, which we probably never do again because it's so hot. We'll never need that much. So yeah. very much, I guess, like a medium uh, kind of temperature or lower setting probably will be more than enough. And one key important thing, if you do have a diesel heater that we found out today, make sure to let it cycle is cooling kind of like cycle at the end so that you don't switch off the electricity straight away, otherwise you'll burn out the device. So yeah, that was a successful test. Was successful. I'm amazed at how little power it used. I ran such thick gauge cable to the heater just in case, but I think probably didn't need to at all, but that's okay. Everything in this camper is now over thickness in terms of gauge cable, so that's only a good thing in my opinion. Um, yeah, really happy with it. The exhaust wrap got really hot, so I'm going to add even more of it, but it didn't make anything around it hot at all, which is, I guess, what the idea is. It keeps that heat in. The screen will get mounted. We've got a little, like, remote control key fob thing for the diesel heater as well that we can have somewhere really accessible. So yeah, really, really happy with that. That looks like we could just crank that non-stop even if we had almost no solar power. So um, yeah, happy with it. So just need to sort out the ducting and uh, that's all complete. All right, we're gonna do a little test. We're gonna plug a foldable solar panel. So this is five amp from a hundred watt solar panel we've got at the top. Seven. All right, it's getting up seven amps. Yeah, around 7 amps. Oh, it's still increasing. Okay, so we've got an extra 2 amp from that foldable solar panel at this stage. That's not right. That doesn't seem very good. So this is not an drive solar panel. This is just a budget brand that we had on the Jeep last year. We just want to test it out. It's supposed to be 200 watt solar panel. Let's have a little look if that's better. Oh yeah, that's a little bit better. Getting 10 amps now, so another 5 amps from that panel. Still not 
obviously the AKA best quality. <laughs> Yeah, we're getting the same amount that we're getting with a 100 watt solar panel on the roof. So you can see the difference right there in terms of quality. Yeah. <laughs> 200 watts going on 100 watts for sure. Okay, the good news is my it portable uh, Anderson connection works really well yeah. connected to this we guy. show it. Yeah, come have a look. So it just plugs straight into here, near where the earth's come out. Really clever system. So if the truck's casting shade, we can have uh, the solar panel <laughs> out all the way out here if we want to. I don't think we'll really, really need to use it to be honest, but um, every little bit might help, especially if the weather's not been great. Um, yeah. We'll take it. Yeah. Alright, so we're starting to work finally on our bed structure and framing, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Potentially, we just want to make more progress first. But right now today, it's around like 32, 33 degrees, it's way too hot. And because our batteries are full, we just figure why not using the aircon inside? That would make working in much better condition. So we've got here our True Master Fire remote. All right, we're just gonna crank it. We're at 28 degrees in here. 28 degrees inside the camper. 28 degrees. All right. 21 degree. I'm not too sure what temperature we want. Um, yeah. Sounds good. Make sure the oh. fans are open. Fence open. Nice. <laughs> Personal cooler. Mmm. <laughs> ah, oh, so good. How many watts is it using? Let's do a little quick check. 15 watts. No. That can't be wrong. 19. <laughs> Hold on. What trickery is this? <laughs> it's, it's, it's cold. And, it's, and I put like the medium mode as well. Like it's not the lower setting. <laughs> this is amazing. Nah, it, it's not drawing it. Excuse me. <laughs> Take that as a win. You're running off diesel. <laughs> oh, I will take that as a win. Eh. <laughs> Who wants to do its thing? Take no power. That's fine by me. <laughs> Update, we spoke too fast. <laughs> it does use power. <laughs> so, like, yeah, around like 270 watts. Still not too bad. At all. I mean, and the door is open right now, so it's not even like fully efficient, like in terms of conserving the cold inside. Oh, well, it's pretty amazing. Good on you, Truma. Keep doing your thing over there. the coolest thing from the mug is to see the animals from outside and they can't see us. today Man. oh my god that's almost the end of the aluminium actually not quite we still got the platform but we'll we'll count that as a win oh it's been Gosh. a rough day today it's like 38 degrees today. was worse than yesterday we put a bit more air con again oh. today but i think it was Didn't still too hot it was i think 38 degrees today so <laughs> yeah just like we're so sweaty i think we're gonna go to the beach and jump in the ocean for for a change because mm. oh no i'm out of it yeah, so we won't like quite tell you yet exactly what's going on with the bed. We'll give you kind of sneak like a peek. sneak peek of what's going on. Help. <laughs> Don't break it. 
Oh my god. Oh. Stick beak goes wrong. I think she got some weight to it. So this is the sneak peek of the bed. We are very much hoping in the coming week we'll make more progress so that we can share very much everything on next week's episode. So yeah, stay tuned for that, but no, very happy with the progress of this. Yeah, we have a bed. We can actually put a platform down and sleep on that now. It's pretty amazing. Which is, was, which is the main goal. We're trying to potentially go away for a little trip for Christmas. So having a bed is very much the last thing that we need really to make it like a comfortable trip. Mm. All right, let's call it a day yes. on that win. All right, thought I'd get up here before it gets ridiculously hot this morning. Testing the new GoPro media mod. So hopefully it'll make this wind noise a little bit better for you guys listening at home. So just wanted to go over the solar wiring. Now I chose to wire everything in parallel. So what we've got here is obviously the four panels, they are wired together. The 100 watt panel is wired completely separately. The reason the 100 watt panel is wired separately is that it is a different voltage from the other four. And therefore if I wired all five together, it would only be as efficient as the 100 watt panel. So you would really hamstring the whole setup. So that's just something to bear in mind. You want the panels to be exactly the same when you wire them together. So what we've got going on here is the inner drive panel obviously has a positive and a negative. This one has a positive and negative. I've got those coming together into an MC4 branch connector. So that's this guy here. So there's two and that goes to one. So that works really well for doing parallel. So effectively I've turned two panels into one panel by the time it comes out of here. Now these things in the middle are MC4 10 amp fuses. I've got one on each panel, so five fuses up here. I bought that from a company called Renergy Online uh, and they are completely watertight fuses. So what I had not really kind of fully realized is that these solar panels produce power whether they're plugged into a system or not. So if one of them kind of shorted out, it would get a whole bunch of current into the other panels so um, having those fuses there will protect that otherwise you're going to burn up your whole solar array potentially hopefully that will never happen but pays to be safe and then down here i've got the same thing going on i've got two panels turning into another panel with one of these branch chain connectors and then those then effectively two panels turn into one panel again and goes down into the roof a parallel setup what that means is that the panels multiply the current. Now you've got to be careful with that because this is the 12 volt system. That means there's a lot of current going through uh, the cabling. So you need to make sure you're running adequately gauged cable size to deal with all that current. Or you could potentially get the cable heating up too much and causing a fire or a short. Or even in the best case scenario, you're not going to be able to get your maximum power because it's going to be limited by the thickness of the cable coming in. If I'd done a series setup, that would mean I wouldn't have to run as thick a cable because rather than multiplying the current, it would multiply the voltage. And then that's not so bad. You don't need thick cable for that. But these are 43 volt panels each. So all up, it would be too much voltage for the MPPT TriStar controller because they are very high voltage panels. So that's why I chose to do parallel. So I ended up going with six millimeter solar cable, which isn't even that overly thick because I don't have a long run going on. But yeah, that's the, the solar setup going on. Looks like a little bit of a dog's breakfast in here, but it's effective and it's working. Hopefully the wind noise wasn't too bad. All right, and this is where we're gonna finish the day at. A little bit of woodworking for the bed, trying to make it a little bit nicer with our birch fly. So it's all coming up. We've got more woodworking coming up tomorrow for the energy cabinet. And then the kitchen will be last. I have to pick up our mattress very soon. So we get finally a bed. Finally doing the last stage, the bed. 
Yes. Yeah, so it's going to be exciting. We can't wait to share with you a bit more about the bed and leaf system, but that will be for next week's episode. We have turned the fridge on for the first time properly today and put some food in there. <laughs> so we're watching it. It's down to temp now. We'll leave it a couple of days and see what happens with the energy usage and show you guys that and whether you know that's a viable solution uh, long term on the road for us. Hopefully it is. And we cranked the aircon yesterday again. Yeah. It ended up it was actually 44 degrees yesterday, so it was Perfect. ridiculous. <laughs> we had it on full blast in here, but we were going in and out the whole time when we'd had the windows open, so it was cooking in here. Mm. The diesel heater, the screen said it was 34 degrees in here, so we saw it jump up to like, it was using something like 600 watts. Again, full blast, so we still need to do more tests uh, to see how that goes long term. Yeah, so that was a bit of a good week in terms of testing in that respect. So more tests this week, as Chris said. I just wanted to say as well a huge thank you for everyone who subscribed the past mm -hmm. week because we did see a jump coming from like the last episode. We are nearly at 39,000 subscribers, so getting closer to 40, close which to 40. is a big, big goal. Hopefully 40 before the end of the year would yeah, be so be amazing. nice. So yeah, thank you. And if you're not subscribed, then please consider subscribing then. <laughs> see you next time, guys. Thanks Cheers. for watching.